When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times, and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do, Israelites, we ventured well into the future to get a better understanding of our present circumstances, as well as to better prepare for what is to come. The Most High don't want his people to be in the dark about prophecy and their future. The Most High want you to know exactly what will take place to prepare the remnant. The Most High know that religion won't tell his people the truth about prophecy. Therefore, the father took matters into his own hands by using the people he anointed for this generation to help set his people free from religious bondage. The Most High will sanctify all who wants to be purified with the truth. Remember, it's the truth that will make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The synagogue of Satan know that the truth will deliver everyone with an ear to hear from religious attacks. One of the many ways the synagogue of Satan oppressed the truth is through censorship. Israelites, censorship is a spiritual attack. Just like how religious doctrines are spiritual attacks, censorship is a spiritual attack as well. Some of us live in countries when a person turns 18, they are considered adults. They are no longer viewed as a minor. In some countries, Minor children as young as two years old can transition if they believe they have been born into the wrong body. A life-altering decision such as transitioning can take place at a young age, while that same two-year-old cannot stay home without adult supervision. Somehow, they are mature enough at two years old to transition, but they need a babysitter until they reach a certain age. We are definitely living at the times when the words of the Most High said, what is good is considered evil and what is evil is good. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I brought up the fact that at 18, a person is considered an adult and can make adult decisions because Israelites, when it comes to your spiritual beliefs and what you choose to consume on social media, these choices have been removed from you. The workers of iniquity who work for the high level spiritual wickedness in high places that own the various social media platforms are the people making decisions for you. You're not allowed to think for yourself despite being 18 and over. You're not allowed to watch nor engage in conversations that you want to be a part of on social media. The workers of iniquity are filtering through channels like this and countless other channels that unplug from the B system's mind control over the people. The workers of iniquity don't allow the people they considered adults to make their own decisions when it comes to what they consume on social media. Your opportunity to choose have been taken away from you. Most people don't realize their rights have been infringed upon. That's exactly how the kingdom of darkness operates. The synagogue of Satan have been making life-changing decisions for you as well as controlling your spiritual beliefs for multiple generations. When they censor channels, they have decide on what they believe is good for you. Israelites and Gentiles, are you going to continue to allow the spiritual wickedness in high places make life-changing decisions for you? 
Do you remember the life story of Judas Iscariot? Satan deceived him. The scriptures went as far as to say Satan entered into Judas. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. Last week, you learned how the human body can have multiple unclean spirits dwelling in it. That is why flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of the Most High. The flesh body is corruptible. Therefore, we must change to obtain our natural spiritual body to dwell in the coming kingdom. If the Most High allow our flesh body to enter his kingdom, the Father risks unclean spirits entering his kingdom. The Most High said nothing corruptible could enter his kingdom. Israelites and Gentiles, that is why we will change. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Satan was able to enter into Judas Iscariot and influence him to betray the Messiah, as you have heard in the scriptures. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to know what is influencing your mind as well as your flesh desires. In the flesh, it appears as if Judas Iscariot is betraying the Messiah. However, Judas Iscariot was controlled and influenced by Satan who entered into him to betray the Messiah. Also, Judas Iscariot was predestined for the role he played. After Judas Iscariot finished betraying the Messiah, Satan left him. Once Judas realized what he had done, he couldn't take it. When unclean spirits have a strong hold over your mind, at times you have no recollection to what you have done. It's not until the devils accomplish what they wanted and flee from you, that is when you begin to remember what you have done. The man in the tomb, he lost total control over his life. Unclean spirits made him cut himself, act erratic, and live in the tombs. Once the devils was cast out of him, he returned to himself. There's a lot of people walking among us with legions of devils controlling them. The most extreme cases are labeled as a mental illness. A mentally ill person is under demon possession. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. As you heard in the scriptures, the unclean spirits entered the pigs and violently went down a steep and drowned in the sea. Majority of the time when a person is under influence of unclean spirits, they are violent. Conspiring to kill the Messiah is as violent as a person could get. Judas participated in the plot to kill the Messiah. Once Judas came to himself, he tried to give back the money to the workers of iniquity that conspired against the Messiah to clear his guilty conscience. Giving back the money wasn't going to save his life. The workers of iniquity didn't care. They said to him, whatever you're going through is your business. Despite the workers of iniquity conspiring with him, as well as influencing him to attack his own, as long as what they wanted was accomplished, they didn't care unto what happened to Judas Iscariot. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Israelites and Gentiles, just like the workers of iniquity could care less about Judas Iscariot, 
the spiritual wickedness in high places that are making decisions for you could care less about you. The synagogue of Satan wants to control your beliefs as well as life. If they can keep you from thinking for yourself or from focusing on what matters, they will do exactly that. That is why they use censorship to try to prevent the truth from spreading. Most people go along with whatever the synagogue of Satan say and do because they're unaware that they are under control. The moment it gets real and the wrath of the Most High come upon you, suddenly the workers of iniquity that work very hard to control your every move is nowhere to be found. In addition, they could care less unto what happens to you. Judas Iscariot felt condemned and he repented of the sins and returned the money to the workers of iniquity who conspired with him. The workers of iniquity that gas him up was the same people saying that it's not their problem during his crisis. Saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. The workers of iniquity that force their religious doctrines upon the people, they go to great length to silence the truthful voices to uplift their falsehoods. The very people whose job it is to flag channels and interfere with other people's belief are just like Judas Iscariot. At the great white throne judgment, when the books are open, are you going to say to the Most High, I was just doing my job? Will your boss be standing there with you to say to the Most High, my employee was doing his or her job. I am to be blamed for interfering. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The time have come for some of you to realize that you're helping the Satans destroy yourself and your people. The synagogue of Satan, the very people that conspire against you, is not going to be there to save your life. I know most of you are used to an idol that proclaimed to have taken the sins of the world. The very people who gave you that idol and that idol won't be there to save you. If you didn't rise at the first resurrection to reign with the Messiah during the millennial reign, the great white throne judgment awaits you. Only the righteous, the Messiah raised at the last day, just as he promised, will escape the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The Most High warn us about being partakers in other people's sins. Satan and his disciples are not going to be there holding your hands to console you. Just as the workers of iniquity said to Judas Iscariot, that is your problem. The workers of iniquity whose doctrines you believe are not going to bore your sins. Satan will say to you, just like he said to Judas Iscariot, whom he entered and deceived, why did you listen to me? Remember, Satan hates the seed of Adam and his life mission is to destroy the seed of Adam. Satan said to Adam, I made you fall just as I fell. Therefore did I fall and did I make you fall by that for which I myself fell and with you also. Whosoever accept my counsel falls thereby. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Israelites and Gentiles, the Satan's religious establishments, as well as the owners of the various social media platforms who shame content creators who dare to stand apart are not coming to your aid. Don't put life-changing decisions in the hands of devils. When judgment come upon you because your religious leaders led you into witchcraft and idolatry, are you going to ask the synagogue of Satan who are ordering your steps, why did you lie to me? Will the workers of iniquity partake in the consequences to your sins? When was the last time one of the world's most renowned pastors of this world suffered for your sins? These pastors don't know you. They will take your money, but your sins, no. When was the last time the spiritual wickedness in high places helped you when the Most High chastised you? The Most High chastised the ones he loved. If you've never been chastised by the Most High, then you don't belong to Him. For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth, 
and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. The scriptures did say there is only a remnant. The Most High had been warning his people for countless generations. The Most High said very clearly in the scriptures, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Whoever controls the mind controls the person. Israelites, that is why I share with you the scripture in the book of Roman and in the book of Ephesians that say you must allow the Most High to renew the spirit of your mind repeatedly. In order to be transformed, you have to renew your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Israelites and Gentiles, it's extremely important for you to allow the Most High to renew your mind. That is the only way you will become transformed. We have been consuming religious falsehoods for multiple generations. The time have come for us to rise above the meaningless content the workers of iniquity promote on social media to overshadow the truth of the Most High's words. The Most High have poured out too much truth into this world for his people to continue to be deceived by doctrines of devils. The way the synagogue of Satan operates truly show you who the workers of iniquity serve. The synagogue of Satan know that the moment you can think for yourself, they lost control. That is why they censor this channel and uplift the voices of other channels that are similar to this channel that support their doctrines of devils. They can continue to control you as well as renew the covenants they made with you through those doctrines the disciples of Satan promote. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to understand spiritual attacks and how to respond accordingly. Our dependency on religious doctrines must come to an end. The gospel of the kingdom is here to remove your dependency on doctrines of devils. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The truth is very important for this end time generation. Now that we have finished reviewing end time prophecy, we need to come back to our present reality. I hope that your knowledge have increased enough to know what to expect in the end times. I hope that you're better equipped to recognize the signs of the times. Not every event that takes place in this world is a part of end time prophecy. Remember, the workers of iniquity will be able to do great signs and lying wonders. We must allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Israelites and Gentiles, we have entered into the season where the spiritual wickedness in high places deemed the most wonderful time of the year. I was going to write a regular post on my community page about the importance of prayer and fasting at this time. However, I was led to speak on it instead of making a post. Israelites, it's very important to not turn a blind eye to spiritual attacks. Every Israelite and Gentile that knows anything about spiritual warfare should know spiritual attacks means war. Your enemy have come to battle and you have no choice but to fight. I know that religion taught you that the battle is for the Most High and Jesus will fight for you. In order to get access to the army of the Most High, you have to pray and fast as well as repent to get help from the army of the Most High. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The Most High, the Father, have to give the order to Michael and Michael will send one of his angels to fight for you. If you don't serve the Most High, and if you don't know who the Word of God is, you will have a hard time getting help from the Most High. A lot of Israelites and Gentiles perish because they don't know who they serve. Israelites, it's very important for you to let go of religious fairy tales to welcome the truth with gladness. The most wonderful time of the year is actually the most diabolical time of the year. The synagogue of Satan covered their rituals and spiritual attacks behind the holidays. While people are celebrating the dead, 
overeating and giving their money to the spirit of poverty to buy gifts. The pagans are seeking their idols to get power to control you as well as to renew the covenants they've established with the people through the various avenues they created in the beast system. The spiritual wickedness in high places are making plans on how they will fulfill the will of Satan in the world. For some people, they believe the kings of the earth serve the most high. The kings of the earth don't serve the most high. They serve the God of this world. That is why the earth is in the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The scriptures reveal to us that the kings of the earth that will rise in the end times, Satan will use them to bring pain and suffering to a lot of people in this world. The scriptures in the book of Revelation credit Satan as the force behind the beast and all the kings that will rise in the end times. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? To the Israelites and Gentiles that hold the leaders in their countries in high esteem, you really need to ask the Most High to show you the heart of the leaders that rule over you. The scriptures symbolize the world leaders as beasts for a reason. The Antichrist will use the power from the kingdom of darkness to war with the people of the Most High. The Antichrist will use deceit, just like the leaders of today use deceit to get the people to vote for them. Once they are in position, they discard the people that put them in the office. The scripture said the Antichrist will win the heart of many people through flatteries. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The Satans haven't changed the methods they use to deceive the people who blindly follow them. Israelites and Gentiles, you truly need to understand that the power behind the kings of the earth don't come from the most high. The spiritual wickedness in high places don't serve the most high. They serve Satan, the God of this world. Any leader in our generation or past generations that truly serve the God of Israel never lasts long in their position. Majority of the time they are killed and replaced with a puppet. How many times have we heard of a president suddenly dying from a plane crash or a mysterious death? The scripture said Satan have come down to us in great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. But the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Earlier, you heard in the scripture of Satan saying he will wage war with Adam and his seed. Israelites and Gentiles, that is why I say to you, don't allow people you've never met nor people you don't know who they serve control your beliefs. Don't allow the synagogue of Satan to order your steps. When you're held accountable for your actions, the very people that are controlling you are not going to be there with you to save you. That is why you must work out your own salvation. In the vision John had that is documented in the book of Revelation, John said he saw three unclean spirits coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The scripture revealed to us the words coming out of the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet mouth are coming from unclean spirits. When you read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit, it will show you the heart and mind of the people who rule over you. So far, none of the kings of the earth in the end times are being led by the powers from the kingdom of the Most High. Unclean spirits and the Satans are controlling the modern day kings of the earth. The prophets, whom the scriptures refer to as the two witnesses, are the only high profile people that is coming in the end time that will have the power and words of the Most High to teach and proclaim the words of the Most High in truth. Like all leaders and true servants of the Most High, the two witnesses will be killed. Their death will come after they've completed their mission. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast 
that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. The most wonderful time of the year is a season of illusion. The synagogue of Satan cover their sorceries with holidays they've created to celebrate their idols. Many people who celebrate the pagan holidays believe they're serving the God of Israel. In actuality, they are serving the idols of the heathens. The holiday festivities cover up all the tragedies that usually takes place during the most wonderful time of the year. For those of you who don't understand the season we have entered into, from October to January, the pagans will be doing a lot of rituals and sorcery. The idols, the pagans serve one souls. The pagans have to deliver. Around this time of year, the witches, warlocks, wizards, high priests, all manners of workers of iniquity will be doing a lot of rituals and giving their idols sacrifice you will see a lot of high profile people dying and an increase in tragedies. You will also see the people who refuse to continue in the rituals get exposed and strip of their wealth. During the most wonderful time of the year, a lot of demonic things are taking place behind the scenes. The workers of iniquity participate in rituals throughout the year. However, towards the end of the pagan year, there's an increase of rituals and sacrifices. Most people can't see how satanic this time of year is because the holidays have blind their eyes. The God of this world will always have a distraction to keep you from seeing what's in front of you. Israelites, don't let the God of this world blind your eyes. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Praying and fasting is a must at this time for the remnant. We should be praying daily. Fasting should be a part of our spiritual journey. However, if you want to get close to the Most High and get results, add fasting to your routine and you will see a big difference in your spiritual journey. Fasting will attract the Most High to you. The scriptures told us to draw near to the Most High and He will draw near to you. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Fasting will draw the Most High to you. Fasting is afflicting your flesh. Remember, you cannot please the Most High in the flesh. When you afflict the flesh, you give your spirit, the real you, the opportunity to be nourished and to take center stage. If you want to see the Most High, you have to nourish your spirit with the words of the Most High and most importantly, fasting to see the Most High. Last week, you learned that the flesh and the spirit need different things to sustain it. The flesh needs earthly food, rest by sleeping and exercise. When it comes to your spirit, Fasting will nourish your spirit. That is why you often see our ancestors in the scriptures fasting for long periods of time to hear from the Most High and to get help from the Most High. In addition to fasting, reading the words of the Most High will nourish your spirit as well. When your knowledge increases, it becomes difficult for the synagogue of Satan to deceive you. When your knowledge increases, you won't perish from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. During the most wonderful time of the year, the workers of iniquity are fasting and doing everything their idols request of them. Witches and warlocks are devoted to their idols. They will fast, pray, and give their idols sacrifices to be able to obtain their heart desire. Pagans serve multiple gods, and they are dedicated to the gods they serve. They will give their idols blood sacrifices to obtain the things they want. The pagans know how to use spiritual powers from the kingdom of darkness to get what they want. Witchcraft is how they use spiritual powers to get what they want. None of us are exempt from witchcraft attacks. During the most wonderful time of the year, majority of the world's population are under witchcraft attacks. 
I know some of you may not believe you're affected by the sorcery being done. I want you to know the leaders you place over you have to do these rituals. The leaders normally sacrifice the people who support and follow them to their idols. Some celebrities do the same with their fans. Pastors sacrifice their congregation. Israelites and Gentiles, you have to understand every aspect of the Gentile reign is infiltrated by workers of iniquity who does the will of Satan. They all have to participate. That is the only way they will stay in power and not lose their life. The spiritual wickedness in high places are not the only groups participating in the sorcery. You would be surprised by the number of people who engage in sorcery. The scriptures did say a person's enemy are the members of their own household. A man's foe shall be they of his own household. Religion is witchcraft and idolatry. Over 80% of this world's population have some sort of religious affiliation. Many people engage in sorcery behind the scenes. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to pray and fast during the pagan's most wonderful time of the year. Fasting is how you get the help of the Most High. There's one more important thing you must do to see the hands of the Most High. You must praise. No matter what you do, make sure to praise the Most High. Because it's while you're praising, the Most High will be slaying your enemies. Don't let anyone take the power of praise out of your mouth. No matter what you go through, praise the Father. I am a living witness to tell you praising the Father while praying and fasting will give you the results you desire. When a large army from many nations descend upon Judah for war, our ancestors at the time was outnumbered and they were afraid. The king in Judah at the time, King Jehoshaphat, served the Most High. As soon as he heard a great army was coming, he proclaimed a fast among his people. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. King Jehoshaphat didn't gather his people to protest. King Jehoshaphat didn't come on social media exposing the armies of the enemy. The king didn't complain about an army coming to fight him. Although the king was afraid, the king gathered his people and proclaimed a fast. Likewise, Israelites, when you're threatened and your enemy gather against you to battle, you must be wise enough to know that you must proclaim a fast to hear from the Most High. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Israelites and Gentiles, during the most wonderful time of the year, a great multitude has gathered against you to battle. That is why you must pray and fast to get help from the Most High. Sitting around and ignoring the threat is not going to make it go away. Ignoring spiritual attacks is how the Satans destabilize you as well as keep you hostage in a spiritual cage. When threatened, you must act upon the threat. Spiritual attacks are not to be ignored. The most wonderful time of the year is a spiritual attack. King Jehoshaphat prayed in the midst of his people during the fast and remind the Most High of his words. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend for ever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon, and of Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them 
and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. I didn't want to eliminate any part of King Jehoshaphat prayer because it's a very good example of prayer that can help you structure your own prayer in a time of trouble. The king reminded the Most High that he was their God. The king also reminded the Most High of what he has done for them in the past. The king asked the Most High for help. The king got the entire kingdom of Judah to come in agreement with him. After his prayer, the spirit of the Most High came upon his anointed from the tribe of Levi to respond to King Jehoshaphat's prayer and fasting. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king, Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle, Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. The Most High reassured his people that the battle was not theirs, but the Most High's. The Most High even told them that they didn't need to fight in the battle. In order for King Jehoshaphat to get the help that he needed from the Most High, he prayed and fast. Once the king and the people heard from the Most High, they worshiped and praised the Most High. Israelites, praising the Most High is you confidently saying the battle have been won. Also, you trust that the Most High will fight for you. Israelites, you may not see what's happening behind the scenes when you begin to praise the Most High, but know that while you're praising the Most High, the Father will send his angels to fight for you. While the king and his people was praising the Most High, the Most High set traps for the army coming against his people. The Father destroyed the great army without his people needing to physically fight the threat. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth for ever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. But the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Israelites, the story about King Jehoshaphat and the multitude is a great example of spiritual warfare. Israelites and Gentiles, when you're under witchcraft attacks or any form of spiritual attack, you must pray, fast, and repent of any known and unknown sins. 
You must praise the most high. That is how you will get the help you need to fight against your enemies. During the most wonderful time of the year, you must enter your sacred place to pray and fast. Once you finish praying, praise the most high. We as a people must do this to counter the spiritual attacks done against us during the pagans' most wonderful time of the year. As a people, we have to obey the instructions of the Most High to get the results that we want. Simply knowing about the pagans' demonic season and ignoring it is not how a people who have returned to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth should operate. We have to be devoted to our God to triumph and over our enemies. The pagans are dedicated to their idols. As a people returning to our God, we have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Israelites, you should be praying and fasting throughout the year. However, when it comes to the season the pagans call the most wonderful time of the year, you should increase your fasting. The workers of iniquity will send unclean spirits against you to torment you. If they can sacrifice you to their idols, they will. You must protect yourself and the people closest to you. The time have come for us to put into action everything we're learning in the awakening. There's a lot more that can be said about the most wonderful time of the year. I will continue to share with you everything I know so that you can find success throughout the year. Israelites, Trust the Most High with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. I pray that the peace of the Most High will be with you always. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength.